Well hello there, Adam Bazalgette here, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. Today's subject, how to compress your iron shots, how to squash that ball. I'd say there's four components, we'll look at those, but we're really going to camp out on one of them and it relates to applying pressure to the ball, relates to your hip action. I'm telling you, talking to golfers day in, day out, their sense of what to do with their hips is so murky, it's so unclear. I think we can clear that up for you. So we'll look at the four components. We'll give you three drills at the end. I think these will help you. Very briefly, if you're new to the channel, perhaps you've watched the videos before but haven't subscribed, would love it if you'd hit that subscribe button now. Helps us build momentum. We want to bring you free content and hit that bell there as well. You'll be notified every time a new video is coming your way. Thanks. First component of compressing the ball, centered contact. I'm telling you, you watch someone hit the ball off the toe or heel with high speed camera, you will be amazed how much twist is in the club. There's only so much energy coming from the club to the ball. It uses a lot up to twist the club, less goes into compressing the ball. That also applies, by the way, for hitting high enough up on the club face. You hit it very low on the face, less compression there as well. Number two, and that is, let's say you do hit it in the middle of the club face, but if your club face is at an angle to your swing, for instance, swinging left, club face right, it's a glancing hit, picture a slice shot in tennis, you will not get the kind of compression. So number two, even if it's centered, you need the club face square to the direction of swing. Well, that was an eight iron, fairly solid shot. Now these are big, broad topics. You know, centeredness of hit and squareness of hit. And we're not gonna camp out on those in these videos, but certainly having a good sense of impact, which is what we are gonna spend some time on, will help you build a good swing. And after all, it's a nice, simple swing that gives you more likelihood of those two components. Number three on the list is, of course, speed. Hey, listen, the more speed you hit the ball with, obviously, the more you compress it, the further it goes. But we're gonna get into my number four, so let's have a little look at something here. Brand Snedeker on the left, Dustin Johnson on the right. Let's go one frame after impact, maybe two frames of dust in there. So there is a mechanical advantage to applying pressure when the shaft is in line with the lead arm. You need angle between the trail arm and the club shaft there to efficiently compress the ball. You see them both doing that. Not only that, when you create an impact like this, you deal off the club a little bit. Now let me just give you a very, very quick note on something. They know that in testing, zero lofted clubs produce the most efficient compression of the ball. That's because they hit the ball directly on the equator, directly on the back. Now, certainly we're not going to play golf like that. And irons have a lot of loft, but you want to deal off the club a bit. You will more efficiently compress the golf ball when you do. As an example, I put a golf club on the ground, put a bucket of balls on the end of the shaft there. So take a club, you can use a lot of different things, but this is a good one, and push against that for a second and you'll start to feel as that instinctively as you put pressure there, the handle goes forward a little bit and you can tell the loft is decreasing a little bit. Now, another factor, and this is really gonna be the meat of the rest of this video, is what do you do with your hips? If you don't use them well, you are unlikely at high speed to get that kind of an impact. So let's have a little feel for that. So what I want you to do is set up against the firm object. I've chosen a club. Start to feel some push of your glutes and some pressure going in that direction and kind of use that to start to push the handle forward, you're beginning to get the right idea. Now, if you had a bucket, let's say this was full of water or sand or something heavy, I had to keep my head pretty still from a golf posture and chuck all the contents out, you can tell you would have an advantage if you pushed a little bit with your hips this way rather than just try to do that. Now, very briefly, we're going to show you a couple of pros because a lot of people get what they call, this is hip pelvic extension, they get early extension, you don't want that. So let's have a quick look at that, then I've got some helpful drills I know are going to make this pretty easy for you. For a really nice in-depth video course on Solid Strike called Solid Strike Formula, three videos absolutely free, just go get your copy down in the description box. So as we look here, this is Ben Hogan. So just watch his hips more or less, or more than less, I might add, stay right in that same area as he thrusts through to the shot. They don't push towards the ball. Now, if we go back to address very briefly, he's in flexion, he's bent forward. But if we look at him on the follow through here, let's stop him about there. No longer is he bent forward, his hips have thrust underneath him. So that's extension when you thrust your hips, at least hip extension. He does not extend towards the ball. 
he extends towards the target. Always remember, a good tip for you, relate what you're doing with your body to what you want the club and ball to do. You want energy going that way, not out towards the golf ball. So here's the three stages of this drill that I want you to do. Number one, find the firm object, range buckets, great, bottom of a bag stand, chair leg if you're at home, get your setup, and again, first get the feeling. I'm feeling my hips extend towards the target a bit, not towards the ball, heads nice and steady. Here's the key with the drill. Don't just push your hands forward. What you have to do, the only thing you're allowed to do in this drill is really firm your arms up in terms of with your arms, not push them forward. You have to use your back end, your hips, push your hands forward and just hold that for a few seconds and start to map that in. Old friend of mine, Wayne DeFrancesco, you may have seen him online. Great player and teacher. Showed me that drill a long time ago, helped me get my first really decent job in golf 30 years ago as well. So thanks Wayne. Okay, second stage of the drill. Got to be careful how you do this one. Once you've felt this position, you're going to hold it for a few seconds, kind of mentally memorize it. You'd be amazed how your mind can relate to stuff like that. Conscious mind, quiet, but map it in there a little bit. And then just a little swing. And here's the reason it's got to be a little bit, uh, a little swing. Number one, when you've preset your body, you'd have to completely move it away from that position to take much of a backswing. We don't want that. Number two, on the forward side, if your club's up here, you're not nearly firm enough, you're not doing the drill right. So here's the key again with drill number two, hold it till you memorize it. And the reason I'm holding it is because in just an instant, I'm gonna be right back there hitting the ball and it really, really helps to map it in a little bit. Great stage two of the drill. Okay, stage three, we mentioned speed is a factor, of course, a major factor in compressing the ball. Now we're gonna to try to be a little bit less of the tin man, the wooden soldier. Same body motion, same overall firmness in the arms. We're gonna add a little bit of pop in there. So drill's gonna be fairly small, not quite as much preset, just a little bit. And I'm gonna let the club react a little to my hips, a little more dynamic. And just punch that thing out there. Again, very important at your finish. Your arms are stable, in other words, they're firm. Your glutes are tucked and tight. Let's try it again. There's the feeling, a little bit of play in the club for speed. Really solid shot there. I love the way that felt. If you hang out there with these drills, you can do these things at home, honestly. Use a wiffle ball or something. You will start to get good hip action. As I said at the beginning of the video, if you have a good sense of your impact, you know, even if you, I mean, it's gonna inform your golf swing. Your swing will get simpler and better if you know right where you're going to at impact. This is how you compress the ball, certainly this feature of it. Again, it's not that difficult to do. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video, appreciate you watching, and hopefully this will help you compress the ball.